In October, Indonesia is poised to launch a groundbreaking $7.3 billion high-speed electric rail line connecting its two largest cities, Jakarta and Bandung. This project represents a significant milestone in Indonesia's ongoing efforts to advance its infrastructure development, and upon completion, it will stand as the inaugural high-speed rail system of its kind in Southeast Asia. However, a compelling question piqued the interest of many people, why did Indonesia award the high-speed rail project to China, rather than Japan? In this video, we will provide a comprehensive answer, backed by factual data, explaining the Indonesian government's decision to choose China for its HSR project over Japan. If you enjoy watching engaging videos about events in Asia, be sure to subscribe to our channel, as we'll be delivering a wide range of captivating content covering Asia's latest developments. So let's get started. Initially, Japan played a pivotal role in the development plan for this rail line. The Japan International Cooperation Agency, JITSA, conducted a comprehensive feasibility study for the project. However, with a change in Indonesian leadership, the trajectory of the project's direction also underwent a transformation. During President Jokowi's tenure, Japan ceased to be the primary focus for continuing the high-speed rail construction. As reported by a leading Indonesian news outlet, Compass, Japan had allocated a substantial sum, amounting to $3.5 million, for conducting the feasibility study since 2014. Consequently, Japan expressed disappointment with the new Indonesian government's preference for China in implementing the project. This disappointment was conveyed by Japan's ambassador to Indonesia, Yasuaki Tanizaki, who articulated dissatisfaction on two fronts. First, he highlighted the substantial size of the feasibility study fund Japan had provided. Second, he emphasized Japan's unquestionable technological prowess, making it a prime candidate for the project. The Indonesian government's choice of China over Japan for the Jakarta Bandung high speed train project was made after careful thought, taking both economic and political factors into account. Among these factors, the economic aspect held greater significance. There are three primary reasons why Indonesia leaned towards China for this project. Number 1. Financing Considerations The Indonesian government has underscored the importance of ensuring that the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail project does not strain the state budget. President Jokowi has articulated that the state budget will be primarily directed toward infrastructure development beyond Java. And when it comes to financing proposals, the Chinese offer proves to be more advantageous for the Indonesian government. The key reason behind this is that Indonesia wouldn't need to tap into its state budget, instead, all financing responsibilities would be shouldered by China through a business-to-business -business cooperation arrangement. Conversely, the proposition put forward by Japan places a heavy burden on the Jokowi administration. Japan's involvement in the project is contingent on financing being secured with guarantees, and the project's associated risks would also fall on the Indonesian government. Here's a comparison chart for the high-speed rail proposals between China and Japan. Firstly, China initially offered a lower cost of $5.5 billion, even though it later exceeded this budget. In the beginning, China's proposal was more cost-effective compared to Japan's. Secondly, China provided a loan without requiring the Indonesian government to serve as a guarantor. This means that if the project encounters difficulties, the Indonesian government is not financially responsible. Conversely, Japan's proposal necessitates the Indonesian government's guarantee for the loan. Thirdly, China's proposal involves the creation of a joint venture company, with the project's risks shared within this venture. This implies that the project will operate under a business-to-business -business framework. In contrast, Japan's proposal calls for greater involvement from the Indonesian government. Lastly, China has expressed a willingness to transfer high-speed rail technology to Indonesia. Additionally, China is open to establishing a joint venture with Indonesian companies to manufacture rolling stock for high-speed rail, electric rail, and light rail systems. This partnership would not only benefit Indonesia but also facilitate exports to other Asian nations, 
along with the transfer of relevant technology. Japan, on the other hand, has declined to provide such technology transfer. Therefore, from the proposals submitted by the two nations, Indonesia is more willing to accept what is offered by China than Japan. Number 2. To balance superpower relations. Another significant factor influencing the government's choice to favor China in 2015 was a strategic move to balance the influence of Asian superpowers. As a smaller country, Indonesia found that balancing power through hedging, which means not aligning with one party but instead embracing both opportunistically, was the most effective survival strategy in an unpredictable world. In a scenario where China and Japan were vying for influence in Southeast Asia, ASEAN nations, including Indonesia, had limited options beyond hedging to maintain equilibrium. Historically, the rivalry between Japan and China for influence in Indonesia has intensified mainly since China emerged as a rising power. Japan, with its longer history of economic ties with Indonesia, predates China's engagement. Economic cooperation between Indonesia and Japan began between 1967 and 1970 when the first investments flowed into Indonesia. In 1977, Japan became Indonesia's largest investor, solidifying its position as a long-standing and strategic partner for Indonesia in terms of investment. Taking a look at this graph and you will understand better. As of 2014, Japan's investment in Indonesia totaled $6 billion, while China is at $1.1 billion. But in 2015, Japan's investment in Indonesia decreased to $2.9 billion, while China's investment slightly increased to $1.5 billion. The rise of China as an economic powerhouse compelled Indonesia to adapt its approach to the nation. Gradually, China's economic sway in Indonesia began to erode Japan's long-standing dominance. This shift became evident when comparing the trade figures between the two countries. In 2015, the trade value between China and Indonesia soared to $44.5 billion, surpassing the trade value of $31.3 billion between Japan and Indonesia during the same period. Indonesia holds Japan in high regard as a crucial investor partner, while concurrently fostering a strategic trade relationship with China. Japan has also been entrusted with significant infrastructure projects in Indonesia, including coal-fired power plants and the construction of the mass rapid transit system in Jakarta. Consequently, the decision to engage China for the high-speed train project is a balancing act aimed at ensuring both sides remain content, avoiding favoritism. Indonesia's choice of China for the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Rail project demonstrates the country's independence in decision making. It highlights that Indonesia is open to collaboration with any party that offers strategic and mutually beneficial cooperation, rather than simply following the lead of Japan. Number 3 Strengthening the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership the decision to choose China for the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Rail project can also be seen as a step in deepening the bilateral relations between the two nations. Initially, in 2005, Indonesia and China had a strategic partnership, but by 2013, their relationship had evolved into a more comprehensive strategic partnership. The progression toward a comprehensive strategic partnership gained momentum when President Jokowi met with President Xi Jinping in Beijing in 2015. According to the official website of Indonesia's cabinet secretariat, both leaders agreed to translate the benefits of this comprehensive strategic partnership into tangible outcomes for the people of both countries. During their meeting, the Indonesian and Chinese governments made an agreement known as the Eight Points of Cooperation. One of these agreements, highlighted in point 3, is the MAO between the Minister of State-Owned Enterprises in Indonesia and the National Commission for Development and Reform in China for the Jakarta Bandung High-Speed Rail Construction Project. This move reaffirms Indonesia's choice of China for the high-speed rail project and is part of their efforts to put their comprehensive strategic partnership into action. In conclusion, Indonesia's selection of China over Japan for this landmark project was a strategic maneuver that took into account financial benefits, geopolitical considerations, and the strengthening of bilateral relations.
It symbolizes Indonesia's commitment to pursuing its own path and embracing opportunities that align with its interests and aspirations. As the inaugural high-speed rail system in Southeast Asia, the Jakarta-Bandung project stands as a testament to Indonesia's vision for a prosperous and balanced future. So, here's my question to you, do you think Indonesia made the right choice to choose China over Japan in building its HSR? Well, share your thoughts and leave your comments below. If you like what you watch, hit the like button to show your support for this video. More importantly, subscribe to this channel so that you will continue to receive more interesting videos about the happenings in Asia.